You got two options. Option one, you could produce a video that makes people think, oh, this color grade is disgusting. And then they throw up and never want to see one of your videos ever again. Or option two, when people see your videos, they think, crikey me, how do I get my color grades to look this good? They then continue to watch all the rest of your videos because they look so good. Nobody throws up and everyone's a winner. Now, I presume you're going to choose option two because that's why you're here. You want to get better at color grading and obviously you don't want to make people ill. The truth is it can be tricky, especially when you're new to it and all the tutorials online make it overly complex and probably leave you with more questions than answers. But I'm here to tell you that it's actually easier than you're making it. Is it? And I've just given away the secret. All right, now the cat's out of the bag. The secret to an awesome color grade is simplicity. Have you ever been doing an edit and made it look worse than it was before you even started? If so, it's probably because you're overcomplicating it. And if you don't follow the advice within this video, you just won't get the image that you hoped for. So I'm going to show you my workflow and how simple it actually is to get awesome colours and skin tones without fiddling with a million things within your editor. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the magic bullet that will tie all of this together, giving you more accurate colours and saving you even more time. And with all this in mind, I'm going to keep this video simple as well. I'm not going to go in depth with histograms and vector scopes. I'll save these for other videos because I want to go into detail when you've mastered these bits first. I want to focus on training your eye and just showing you a few tools to get a great image fast. Bash the microphone. So here's my simple three-step process demonstrated using a Willy Bobby and a dog named Goose. So I'm using Final Cut Pro to do my editing, but the same tips apply no matter what editing program you use. It just might look a little bit different. Now, firstly, I'm going to assume that you've been filming in a log profile. I'd encourage you to use a log profile because it's going to give you the most dynamic range and you're also going to have more control over the colors. But if your camera doesn't have a log profile or if you've not filmed in a log profile, you'll probably be able to skip to step two. Get that clean first. So step one is to add a correction LUT. I'm using the Panasonic Lumix S5. You can download straight from the manufacturer's website, but I recommend these ones from Gamut, and it gives you a great starting point with your color grading. So follow the link in the description. You can get these for other cameras as well, but this basically is the first step done because it adds a little bit of saturation, make sure the colors are in the right place, and it also gives us a little bit of contrast. It's as simple as that. Providing you set your exposure and your white balance properly whilst you're filming. Now now if the effect is a little bit too strong, you might just have to turn down the mix slider a little bit or adjust the contrast and the saturation in the next step, so don't worry too much. And we can always come back to this step later anyway. And don't worry, I'm going to show you what this looks like on skin tones later on. Step two is colour correction, and that's basically fixing your contrast, your saturation, fixing any white balance errors that you might have. Now I'm going to do this using the colour wheels to keep it nice and simple. What we want to do is make sure that we put our colour wheels layer on top of our LUT, otherwise it doesn't quite affect affect the colours and the saturation and the contrast properly. So what I'm going to do first is adjust the contrast. Log footage looks dull and grey before you start colour grading it. And our aim for contrast is to make the whites look nice and bright and the blacks to look black, but without losing any detail in the shadows. So all we have to do is go into the colour wheels section and adjust the faders until it looks something like it would in real life. And you'll know how dark or bright something should be, so it's just a case of just messing about with the sliders until you get used to it and you get somewhere close to how it should look. And I'm going to do all this by eye. As I said, I'm not going to be using scopes. You can see already that the dark parts of the image aren't quite dark enough. So I'm just going to take the shadows fader here and just bring it down a little bit. That to me looks quite good. I might just bring the highlights up a little bit to add a little bit of brightness and then adjust the mid-tones slightly. I might just bring the blacks down a touch more, but not too much. So that looks good to me in terms of contrast, but it still looks a little bit dull. I'm going to add some saturation. So I'm going to take the global slider and just bring that up. And all I'm doing is going until it looks just a little bit too vibrant. So as you can see, the greens are looking a little bit too bright. So I'm just going to bring it back a little bit. This is where you might correct any white balance issues, but if you've got it right in camera first, you shouldn't have a problem. You'll know if you have any white balance problems because your image will either look too blue or too orange or too pink or too green. So if it does look too blue, all you need to do is adjust the temperature and warm it up slightly and vice versa. If it looks too green or too pink, you just have to adjust the tint slider. It's as simple as that. This to me looks all right. It might be just on the yellow side slightly. So I'm just going to add 0.5 to the magenta, add a little bit of warmth, just a tiny little bit. And I feel like, to be honest, that looks good to me. That looks really natural. You could leave it at that. Just those two steps alone, I've got a really natural looking image. Sometimes this might be it. 
because if you're doing work for a client, for example, they might just want it to look natural. You don't always use a grade or a stylistic grade. Something as natural as that will be perfect. But I'm just gonna go one step further and show you how to stylize your videos using LUTs. So I'm just gonna add another custom LUT layer to this, and that will go underneath our correction LUT. So I'm using my own retro LUT pack. Again, there'll be a link to these in the description. But the reason why these are so good is because I've done two versions of them. I've done a full contrast version and also a version without contrast. And because we've already done our contrast and saturation steps before this, all we need to do is add the style LUT on top so if you go for the no contrast version we're pretty much there already and then all we need to do is dial in the amount of that LUT that we want to add to our footage so it looks a little bit too strong to begin with so I'm just gonna bring the mix slider down but not too much because as you can see it just reverts back to normal I'm just gonna bring it back slightly and it's still got some of that look but it's not too heavy and then all you need to do is go into your color wheels again and make any final adjustments so I feel like it's a little bit dull so I'm just gonna bring the highlights up slightly not too much though because then we lose the detail in the clouds and we don't want to do that maybe we could just bring the mid tones up or the shadows up a little bit to compensate as promised though just to prove that this method works on skin tones just as well here's a little clip of willy bob before and after so this is what it was like before and then we add our correction look to begin with as you can see those gamut looks look really natural great starting point then we add the color wheels look at that that looks great really natural colors then all you need to do is add your LUT like we did before as I mentioned earlier these three steps alone won't guarantee a good image if you really want to get the best colors out of your camera you need to make sure you do two more simple things before you even start filming and that's why you should watch this video here because it's gonna give you the magic bullet to the ultimate color grade